What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with an unboxing of one of the smallest smartphones on the planet. This is the HP Veer. Let's go ahead and dig in and see if it deserves a tiny little spot in your pocket. Alright, so this is going to be coming to AT&T on May 15th for just about 99 bucks. Here is the box, gone are the Palm branding we've seen on previous WebOS devices. This is the first actual release of a WebOS device under the HP regime. Uh, it's part of their small, medium, and large campaign, with the small being the Veer, the medium being the upcoming Pre-3, and the large, of course, being the touchpad. So we've got a different looking box than we've seen on previous uh, HP and Palm devices. Go ahead and slide that off. There's a bit of a sticker down here. We'll pull that. Let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, it looks very similar to other boxes that we've seen for uh, HP and Palm products, at least on the inside. Got some protection on the front. Welcome to AT&T, quick start guide, all that business. Here is the Veer itself. This is one of those phones that is so tiny you actually have to see it in person. Uh, it's available in white or black. Of course, this is the white model. Uh, it's sort of a panda color with the black screen and the white in the back. Push it off to the side for just a minute. Uh, I do want to dig into the box before I get into the phone because this guy is so small and actually doesn't have a charging port. So I want to show you how the charging happens. Uh, we saw this for the first time back in February at the touchpad event. Go ahead and open this up and get in there. And here are all the accessories. And I believe this is touchstone compatible as well. So if you got an older Palm device, um, you can use it with your conductive charging. Uh, so here is the charger. If you go ahead and see on the side, it doesn't have a micro a USB port. It's got that weird sort of thing on the side. Uh, due to its size, it was too small to include. So it's actually magnetic. Go ahead and just sort of put it near there. It'll snap into place and you can plug this in. Just something to keep in mind. It's kind of neat. Uh, what else you're going to get in the box is a wall charger. And I have no idea what this is. Tiny little black something. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Oh, it looks like a cover and a adapter uh, if you want to use that same port we're talking about for charging for a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Again, due to the phone size, uh, evidently that couldn't be included. So if you want to listen to your music, you're going to need this little adapter. I would have had no idea what that was. We're also going to get the little palm wall charger there. Okay, so enough of that. Let's go ahead and talk about the phone and see what specs this little guy brings to the table because it does pack a pretty big punch. While I'm talking, I will power it on. I believe that's the power button Look in the upper right hand corner. There we go. So HP logo. So let's talk about it. It's got a 2.6 inch diagonal screen at the resolution of 320 by 400. From a dimension standpoint, it is 54 millimeters by 88 millimeters by 15.1 millimeters. Very, very, very thin. Uh, it's being powered by an 800 megahertz Snapdragon processor. So despite its small size, it actually should be a pretty quick device. Uh, it's got support for AT&T's HSPA Plus network. Uh, you can use it as a Wi-Fi hotspot for up to five devices. On the back, you've got a five megapixel camera right next to the speaker grill. It's got a 910 milliamp hour battery, which is going to be good for about five hours of 3G talk time or 300 hours of standby time. So let's take a quick look at the device on the left hand side, volume rocker up and down. On the top, got your power and lock button, a little bit of a lanyard switch right there as well. The logos are blinking on me. There is that sort of multi-purpose magnetic port that you can use for charging or the 3.5 millimeter headset jack adapter we just saw. Microphones on the bottom. On the back, there's that camera. That white HP backing, you can get that in black as well with the AT&T logo. And if you want to input text, you've got to slide this guy up and you've got a full QWERTY keyboard. Uh, when I tried this guy at the uh, HP event, the keyboard was a little bit hard to type on. There is a rail on the side. Uh, it feels like that rail has been reworked since we first saw the prototype. So hopefully we're going to have a bit of an easier typing experience. I have, I guess, relatively large hands. So I'm not so sure that this is going to be uh, the easiest phone in the world, but I will be open-minded and see if it's going to work. Uh, while the phone of this stature might not be the most ideal for me, uh, I love that it exists out there because people are looking for a small device. They don't need a dual-core powerhouse. Uh, they just want to check email, maybe get on the web, 
uh, and not have a lot of bulk in their pocket, uh, this is going to be a very nice choice. So we've got some terms and conditions here. Let me do a size comparison because you're not going to be able to see how small this guy really is in the video. So first, let me just put it in my hand just so you can see uh, how tiny that really is. Let me bring in another phone uh, in AT&T's lineup. Let me bring in the just released Infuse. This is a 4.5 inch phone. You can see just how small this guy really is. I mean, just absolutely tiny. Uh, if we bring in uh, another phone to check out, here is an iPhone 4. Again, you can see how small the Veer is. Uh, let's compare the Veer to its WebOS friend. Here is the Pre 2, uh, which is by no means a big device, but you can definitely see the size difference here as well. Uh, really, really small. So we'll pull this out on the keyboard. You guys can compare the sizes here. Slide this out. You can see the differences there between the Veer and the Pre 2. Anyway, guys, this has been a first look and unboxing. I can wave at you in the camera, sort of. A first uh, unboxing and first look of the WebOS powered HP Veer for AT&T. I'll put this guy through the paces, do a full test, and see if it deserves a small place in your pocket. Uh, what do you guys think about the Veer? Is it interesting to you, not interesting? Uh, leave your comments down below. Anything in particular that you want to see, uh, I'll be sure to let you know. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. I'll see you in the next video.